Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I'm Terry Marcus. I'm the new PTA Council of Howard County President. Um, even though I'm newly president, I have served on PTA boards at the elementary, middle school, and high school level for the past 10 years. Um, unlike a lot of other counties, Howard County, every school has a PTA except one elementary school. And I'm happy to report that our latest high school, Guilford Park High School, just formed their PTSA last month. Uh, the support parents give to their children's schools is vital to their success. And while PTAs do a lot of things we all enjoy, like putting on special events for the students and their families, PTA's mission is to, quote, make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. PTAs are primarily meant to be advocacy groups. So I would like to address all the family members who may be watching this right now. If you are not happy with things happening at your school or things you see happening throughout the entire school system, join your PTA. Start an adv advocacy committee, be a PTAC delegate, or just come to our PTAC meetings as a concerned parent. We meet the first Monday of every month we hear from the transportation department, the safety department, our superintendent, elected officials, and a whole host of other people who work in the school system. We have guest speakers about different topics every month, and we vote on matters that affect the entire school system. At our first meeting on the first day of school, Dr. Moderano took some time away from the busy bus fiasco that day to answer our members' questions. On October 2nd, we heard from our Maryland state delegates and senators representing Howard County to learn about what education-related legislation they plan to sponsor this year. So if you want to go beyond just a social media knowledge of what is happening in HCPSS, I invite you to come join us and be an active participant. Anyone who believes in the PTA's mission is welcome to join us. Uh, while advocacy is PTA's main focus, Please do not confuse advocacy for politics. Per every PTA's bylaws, we are required to be non-commercial, non-sectarian, and non-partisan. It is the basic policy of PTAs at every level to, quote, work to engage and empower children, families, and educators within schools and communities to provide quality education for all children and youth. PTA's responsibility to advocate for all children means that PTA should not pit themselves against each other. Unfortunately, the annual revelation of the capital budget tends to do just that. Community members see it and start vying for their school or group to be first in line to get much needed school improvements. At our last meeting, it was equated uh, to be the HCPSS Hunger Games. Uh, there are other issues, like future school placement, that also tend to divide communities. While the individuals affected by these decisions understandably have a vested interest in what this board decides, PTA's role is not to side with one community or another because we advocate for all children. Sometimes the loudest voices in the community ask for PTAC to take a public stand for or against the latest hot topic item. Doubtless, some of these voices may be PTA members, but they do not necessarily speak on behalf of the larger PTA membership. When PTAC takes a position, we do so on behalf of our membership after making sure there is a consensus of opinion, a proper meeting was held, and a proper vote was taken. Individual school PTAs are held to that same process. Rather than throwing our support behind one group or another, our job is to address the root problem of so many of these controversies, namely the scarcity of public monies available for new school construction, for much needed renovations and replacements, for deferred maintenance, for replacing portables with actual classrooms, for necessary materials for instruction, for making sure our transportation needs are met, and all the other tangible things that make up a quality education. For all the times Howard County's wealth is mentioned, what we do not have is money. Our county is both broke and broken. While no one seems to be admitting it on a larger stage, the county does not have the money it needs to run our school system properly 
or legally given the requirements of Blueprint, nor does it apparently have a solution to fix the problem. Continuing to rely on new development to pay off current debts is not a sustainable solution. At some point, the system will crash and burn, and we fear our children will be the ones to pay the price. This is why PTAC provided testimony to our county council about the general plan voted on just last night. This is why PTAC evaluates and testifies about the operating and capital budgets every year. This is why PTAC fights to strengthen our adequate public facilities ordinances. This is why PTAC fought to secure higher school surcharge fees. This is why PTAC hosts candidate forums for all of our Howard County elected leaders that some of you participated in as well. And it is why we try to educate our membership every month about how we can all work together to sustain the quality of our schools. What we would welcome from you as the school board is transparency. We've heard that tonight. As partners working for the betterment of our schools, we need to know what you all are doing and why you are doing it. Issues with redistricting, transportation, and school funding projects have all damaged the trust between our members and the school system. Parents and teachers need to be heard. There should be a coffee and conversation held in person at least quarterly. Informal face-to-face -face conversations can go a long way in restoring some kind of faith or at least an understanding of why things go wrong when they inevitably do. Please make sure your team is thinking and planning ahead for what's coming next. From a parent's perspective, it seems like our school system is constantly in crisis mode. Please make sure the board is properly overseeing the work of central office, audit the work being done, make sure you are given information in a timely manner so you have the time yourselves to make thoughtful and informed decisions. Finally, use every opportunity to inform the county council, the county executive, and our Howard County delegation about what the school system needs. When we speak of repairing relationships, we should also talk about teachers. Um, PTAs are parent-teacher associations, yet we almost exclusively talk about parents when we talk about PTAs. But at many schools, a lot of the PTA members are staff members. Some staff members even have PTA board positions, and principals are written into our bylaws as board members. So to all the HCPSS employees out there, please work with us to ensure that you too have a full voice in the school system. Let your PTA boards know what your school's needs are so that we can be advocates together. A principal recently told me that he would welcome a presentation on how administrations and PTA should be working together. PTAC is certainly open to speaking to principals in whatever format would work best for the school system. We want to support our schools, but sometimes relationships can flounder, especially when money is involved. PTA leaders are taught not to be their school's ATMs. When PTAs are primarily used as fundraising tools, the situation often arises where in a, full, a few schools are sitting on top of small fortunes while others are just scraping to get by. What PTAs are encouraged to do instead is again to advocate for what their schools need. Advocacy is more important than ever. The new general plan combined with the changes to our adequate public facilities ordinances and zoning regulations are likely to put further strains on our schools that are already suffering. Uh, to conclude, I would simply encourage everyone to please join your PTA. Be a voice for children until they are grown enough to find their own voices. Show them that their education is important to you. <coughs> Pay attention to what is going on. Testify at these Board of Education and County Council meetings. Send in written testimony or just show up to PTA meetings. Volunteer to do something, no matter how small. The good thing about being involved in PTA is you get to see the direct benefit of your work. You get to see your child and lots of other kids you don't know happy because you help make an after school play or dance or basketball tournament possible. Or maybe you help plan a fall festival or a spring fling that the whole school community is looking forward to. Individually, these are small things, but together they make up our children's childhood. So board members, please consider the PTAs and us at PTAC as your partners as we do the work of ensuring all of our children have a quality education 
and quality memories of the time they spend in Howard County Schools. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a phenomenal summary of PTAs. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.